Jesus, how I love Calling, calling on oh, Jesus, my oh, sweet Jesus, Jesus, every day, your name. Oh, we're calling Jesus, my sweet Jesus, how I love calling your Oh, we're calling Jesus, my sweet Jesus, every day, your name. Oh, I'm talking about Jesus, my sweet Jesus, how I love calling your Oh, I'm talking about Jesus, my sweet Jesus. Every day, your name, oh, we call you Savior, my sweet Savior, how I love calling you, oh, we call you Savior, my sweet Savior, every day, your name, oh, you're my healer. You're my healer, how I love calling you, oh, that you're my healer, yeah, you're my healer, every day, your name, oh, you're my redeemer, how I love calling you, Oh, you're my redeemer, your redeemer, every day, your name. Hey, we call you Jesus, Woo! my sweet Jesus, how I love calling you. Oh, we call you Jesus, my sweet Jesus, every day. Your name, oh, and every day, your name, oh, and every day, your name, your name is the same. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. 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 Yeah, y'all feeling all right? I, I know, I, I know y'all didn't get, we didn't have the regular worship leaders. I know y'all got me today. Amen. Amen. Just because the big shots ain't here. <laughs> so since the big shots ain't here, y'all mad. <laughs> Amen. We're going to pray for our worship leaders. We, uh, most of them are in the bay. Uh, um, Darren actually was going to be here, um, but um, he ended up stranded uh, at UCW because um, well, he got stranded. I don't want to throw him under the bus. Um, he got stranded. Not to his, not, it wasn't his fault. He was planning on being here. Um, but ain't God good? I say, ain't God good? Amen. I'm just excited to be here. Y'all excited to be in worship today? Amen. So, I mean, if you didn't get an opportunity to just holler, I know most of the folks, we got folks all over the place. That's all right. The few folks is over here. Holler at them. Say, hey, how y'all doing? Now, if you see some folk over here, just, just holler at the folk over here. Say, hey, how y'all doing? One chance to be country. Amen. We're in a series now. If you are, if you are a guest today and you're new to to our worship services. Usually I would have had on a suit, tie, and stuff. Uh, but today uh, we have worship in the park. So many of our folks are at the park now, and there's going to have games and food. And, and if you're not here, if you're not a member here, you're absolutely welcome to come. Come eat some barbecue and some good stuff. Amen. So today, we won't be as long as we usually are, uh, but that's the reason I'm super casual. Now, just granted, our church is pretty casual, uh, 
Some folks dress up or some folks because we do believe in come as you are. Amen. Just don't come like you just rolled out of bed. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Uh, you know, wrinkled t-shirt you've been sleeping in all night. And come on now. Amen. Because you have to say that. Because we've had to deal with that before, church, haven't we? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Worship in the park today. Dinner with the pastors next week. And I know um, that several of you are going to be there, and we're going to have a good time next week. And if you're new to Metro, um, we're going to eat some good food and have some good fellowship. You're always welcome. <laughs> uh, good food and some good fellowship. Next Sunday, though, also, I don't have a slide for it this time. Next Sunday is um, our Purple Sunday where we support um, domestic violence prevention. And so we're encouraging everybody to wear your purple next week. And we have a sister next, next week who's going to speak during our Sunday school time. Um, her name is Adrian, it's Sister uh, Anderson's daughter. And her testimony is amazing. She is a domestic violence survivor. And uh, so if you have friends who are in, in relationships where they are being battered, whether they be male or female, you remember when we dealt with this last time that uh, that uh, we found out that that the the incidence of female violence has grown to match the incidence of male violence in intimate relationships. So, regardless of what the battery is, um, um, we want you to come next week um, during our Sunday school time. We have a good time. But just a regular worship time, just wear your purple, just support because we want to, to help out. Amen. God, we bless you right now. For you are good and your mercy endure forever. Your love to all generations, your grace is unsurpassed. And Father, we are thankful, dear God, for the word of God today. We're asking for open hearts, open minds, open spirits to hear a word and be changed, Father. Help those who hear the word today to become dangerous, dangerous disciples, God. Fully functioning in everything spiritually that they should. Help them to be world changers, God. Hear the word, do the word as you plant the word in us. We bless your name right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let every saint say amen. Now, it won't be long today, but I'm not rushing either. We are in a series during our 40 days of prayer called Come Boldly. How many of you have been participating every day in our 40 days of prayer? Amen. Oh, yeah, amen. Give the Lord praise. Amen. Um, if you have not, it is not too late. Um, you can start today. Today is day eight. You can start today. How many of you fasted Thursday? <laughs> really? Three people, really? <laughs> oh, amen. Amen. <laughs> Fasting and praying on Thursday. So if you did not get a prayer journal, just let me know. And we'll make sure you get one, either an actual um, copy or an e-copy. So please let us know. But this series, we started last week in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through 16. As a theological and expository foundation for this series. And we found out on last week how the Lord wants us to come boldly to the throne of grace. We remember what the Bible says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all manners tempted like we are, yet without sin. So he says, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain Mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. What God tells us is that today, instead of allowing the stresses and the struggles of life to push us back into a lesser 
form of deliverance, that we will instead keep which is that which is greater, which is Jesus. Therefore, we come to the throne of grace and find grace to help and receive mercy. And from that, we are going to look at five stories in Scripture where people prayed boldly. And because of their bold prayer, God answered and moved mightily. Y'all going to stay with me? I'm trying to learn. One of my mentors told me we, we need to go to Sunday school first before we shout. People need to learn some stuff. They need to know some stuff. So if you're going to shout, at least have something to shout about. Say amen if you can. So today we're going to talk about the bold prayer of the ten lepers. We're in Luke 17, 11 through 19. For the Bible says, now... On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this stranger, this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. In the Old Testament, when a person was thought to have leprosy by a visible outbreak, they were brought before the priest and it was the responsibility of the priest to diagnose their condition. What he would do was to look at the person and note their condition, then he would have them shut up or quarantined for seven days. If, if after seven days they still showed signs of contamination, of uncleanness, of leprosy, then they were pronounced unclean and were removed from the presence of people immediately. Their clothes were rent or torn off of them. Their head was shaved, both men and women. They were forced to wear a veil to cover their face and to reduce the spread of contamination. They had to yell, unclean, unclean, any time they were around people. They were in fact considered a threat to others. Their belongings were gathered and destroyed because they were also contaminated. They were immediately separated from their families and friends because they were contaminated. They were set outside the gates of the city because they were contaminated. They were left all alone because they were contaminated. They were left to die lonely, secluded lives because they were contaminated. The fact is, many of us don't know the dangers of leprosy because leprosy in most forms has been eradicated in our society. But there is still this type of leprosy actually in our society. We just no longer call it leprosy. We call it Hansen's disease. And it is a disease 
that stops all feeling from your hands. And, and when it gets really bad, the fingers can fall off. And it, it's a horrible, horrifying disease. The word leprosy is mentioned over 40 times in Scripture. Many references are understood by those who lived in unsanitary conditions. The main reason leprosy is talked about so much in the Bible is that it is a graphic illustration of sin's destructive power. In ancient Israel, leprosy was a powerful object lesson for the debilitating influence of sin in a person's life. Leprosy was a type or an illustration of sin because it contaminated anyone it touched. If someone had leprosy today, we would not want to be around them. Let me ask you a question. If you had a friend who had the flu, would you want them kissing you? When they come to your house and hug you, do you want to drink water after them? <laughs> do you want to ride in the car with them? Aren't you still their friend? Well, why don't you want to be around them anymore? Well, what if they said, well, this is my flu. <laughs> it don't have nothing to do with you. <laughs> but see, the problem with things that are contamination is that they have a tendency to contaminate others also. Things that are contamination have a tendency not only to be personal contaminants, but also uh, are able to make other folks sick. God, somebody going to hear this in a minute. See, that's how sin is. And I know a lot of folks say, well, this is my sin. It's, this is my personal sin. It's, this sin is between me and God. They don't understand that sin contaminates. And sin oh God, makes those who touch sinners contaminated. Yeah, you can catch sin. <laughs> And, so, and some of us are unknown carriers. <laughs> and so we find here gentlemen, ten gentlemen with leprosy. But the amazing thing about these ten men is that they were bold enough to go to a place where they could find healing. They were bold enough to go to that place and ask for what they, are y'all ready to hear this this morning? And ask for what they needed. They had to come boldly before God. And so first, we ask you to come boldly with your problems. That's the problem of leprosy. With this thought in mind, we come to this statement, verse 11, on his way to Jerusalem. The statement is a reminder for us, on his way to Jerusalem, Luke uses this phrase, this phraseology, this grammatical uh, 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 point uh, to, to let us know. Amen. I wish you would have been here about 15 minutes ago, but y'all say amen. Praise the Lord. Our minister of music just walked in the door. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, brother, I didn't throw you under the bus. I was just, want, I was just glad to see you. Mm -hmm. But Jesus constantly said, uh, in the book of Luke, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. I'm going to Jerusalem. And the reason he did that is because Jesus was always purpose-minded. No matter what he did, he understood where he was going. He had a God-given purpose to finish, a goal in mind, to go to Jerusalem. Because in Jerusalem was where he would finish God's grand purpose for him. Are y'all still with me? In Jerusalem was where Jesus would die. In Jerusalem is where he would be buried. In Jerusalem is where he would be tried. In Jerusalem is where he would finally raise to save sins. And so everything he did was pointed toward Jerusalem. He may have had other secondary or tertiary activities, but he always understood that my life is headed toward Jerusalem. Can I help you just a minute? 
Many of us, the reason we get so often and, and so sideways with our walk for God is because we let everything get us off purpose. We're supposed to be on our way to Jerusalem. We're supposed to be on our way to do what God wants us to do, on our way to save the world, on the way to do amazing things. But instead, we let everything distract us. Jesus was never distracted. I'll come back. Don't worry. It'll make sense in a minute. And so we find out that on his way to Jerusalem, he traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And he comes across this village. And in this village, there's 10 men who had a problem. And their problem was called leprosy. And they met him and they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. When you have a problem, you must position yourself to get what you need. Once you can position yourself correctly, you can get. Do you not notice these guys heard Jesus was coming? And so since they knew the master was coming, they positioned themselves to be where he would be. A lot of people say, well, you know, uh, that's uh, doing a whole lot. See, the only reason you say that is because you've never really had a shown up problem. Because when you have problem enough, honey child, you will do whatever you can to get what you need. The problem is many of us don't understand the deepness of our problems. We got problems and problems on top of problems, and we keep our problems because we refuse to position ourselves in the place where Jesus can bring some healing. So you got to come boldly. Come boldly means tell him everything. Come boldly with your problem. Come up there. Don't front like you don't have a problem. Hallelujah. Don't front like you don't have a problem. Come with the real. God, I'm, I, I got a problem and I need some help right now. I got a financial problem. And I'm not talking about being broke. Many of us don't have a, we're not broke because, because we don't have enough money. We're broke because we don't know how to handle money. Oh, God, come on, y'all. Just say amen and I ain't got that long today. Just Because <laughs> we don't know how to handle money. And since we don't know how to handle our money, we got money problems. But money's not really the problem. It's handling money. And we refuse to position ourselves in the place where we can get some help. We would rather sit with the other ten broke folks. Because your problem also determines your community. Because when you have certain problems, only certain people with certain problems want to be around you. And you wonder why you can't get in the click with the folk with the money because the folk with the money don't want folk that don't know how to deal with their money in their little click. And then you sit back and start talking about them. Oh, they just a ditty. They don't know nothing. I don't know. They just think they all that. They all clickish. They ain't all clickish. They don't want you contaminated. And so what you need to do is understand that your problem will determine your community. Oh, God. Say amen a lot because I, I don't have, yeah. So I saw ten men, and they were lepers in a little leper community. And I'm going to tell you right now, as long as you stay in the leper community, you're going to stay a leper. One day. Why am I still a leper? Why the Lord ain't blessing me? Because you don't have the courage to leave your leprosy. Because you got to be bold to walk on out there. Bold with your problem. Stop pinching the baby. So now all of a sudden, they have this common community. And all of a sudden, their problem is also determining their level of upward mobility. But I want to show you something else about problems. Problems also will, will make you forget about distinctions. When we all po, I don't care if you're black or white, we all po. We all po. We all po. 
So you poor white trash, I don't care because we all poor. I might be a poor ghetto Negro, but poor <laughs> is poor. All of a sudden, black or white don't make no difference. Jew and Samaritan didn't make no difference because we all poor. Have you ever wondered why? Did heaven ever tripped you out? How a person, just watch this, an NBA player, just watch this, an NBA player who just got a 20-something million dollar contract. Did you ever wonder why an NBA player with a $20 million contract get busted? In Nickerson? See y'all, 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 oh, okay, all right. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all brand new now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well all of a sudden, he, what, what's he doing in Nickerson? He, he, he's got enough money to buy three homes in Beverly Hills. What's he doing in Nickerson? Here's why you don't judge him. Because just because you're probably ain't never been that deep. You get your problem deep, deep enough, you'll be in Nickerson too. You'll just go to where you can get what you need to get. Are y'all following? So all of a sudden, these bold men, these men boldly, these men boldly, out of their isolation, out of their hopelessness, they came boldly with their problem. They positioned themselves. And I want to ask you a question. Are you out of position? Are you out of position to get the blessing you need? Are you out of position to, come on, y'all say amen. Y'all know I ain't got that much time. I got like 15 more minutes. Y'all, y'all need to say amen a whole lot because if not, I make y'all think, make me think you don't understand what I'm talking about. Because I start asking the single women that talk about I ain't got no husband. I ask you, are you in position to get a husband? Or are you hanging up? <laughs> So, you not only come boldly with your problems, the problem of leprosy, but you come boldly with your prayer. They ask a prayer for leniency. Jesus commanded them to go and show themselves to the priest. I want you to watch the text here. The Bible says they called out in a loud voice. Notice they called out in a loud voice. They called out in a, they called in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Have mercy on us. Why are they acting for leniency? They hadn't done anything. They're just sick. And a lot of us do, do that today. We say, well, God, it's not my fault. God, you're supposed to help me. That shows your problem ain't deep enough, and so you're not ready for bold prayer yet. Because when you hurt enough, you don't care about the judgment of the person giving you something. You just want some help. And so they say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Because their problem pushed them to bold prayer. And here they are shouting. And that's a problem for a leper. Because a leper has a problem saying anything loud. Because leprosy also affects the vocal cords. But they don't care. I'm positioned, and I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, I, I'll, be, I'll get embarrassed. I'll have everybody looking at me. I don't care. I just need some help. That's what the bold prayer does. Please, God, show me mercy. And I want you to know what the Bible says in verse number 14. When he saw them. Oh, yeah, y'all ain't in your Bible. Y'all, y'all miss your chance to shout there. Let me, let, me see, let me read that again. And calling out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all, let me read that again. Some, somebody here going to get it in a minute. And they cried with a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, not when he heard them. He 
he sees, not he heard, he notices them. The creator of the universe, the word made flesh, he who spoke sees them. And when he sees them, he does not heal them. Watch what he says. He says, uh, he says, and he said, go show yourself to the priest. He gave them the commandment. Because when you pray to God, what you look for is a word from God. And when you hear the word from God, you obey the word from God. Y'all are missing it. Y'all are missing it. Again, y'all are missing it. You pray to God. God sees you. When he sees you, he gives you a commandment. Then he says, go see the priest. He didn't heal them. He didn't say, be healed. Go see the priest. Bold prayer. God now gives a commandment, right? What did he command him? Go see the priest. Why? Because that's what the law says. Because you can't be blessed in disobedience. <laughs> I don't care. At the flame, they were shouting this morning. Y'all acting tired. I don't care. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. God ain't going to bless your disobedience. Oh, God, have mercy on me. Okay, this is what I need you to do. God, I'll do it as soon as. Ain't no as soon as. When he gives you the word, obey it with quickness. Be swift to hear. Am I right about it? Swift, slow to anger, slow to speak. When he gives you the commandment, go do it. You pray the bold prayer. You make God notice you. And when God notices you, what does he do? He speaks the word. And what did, have, what did they do? Well, well, I want you to notice first what they didn't do. They didn't start arguing with God. They didn't start saying, oh, God, you know, I, I'm still sick. The Bible says, go yourself to the priest. Show you. And, and as they went, they were cleansed. Oh, God, y'all missed a shout again. Glory to God. Maybe all the shouting folk at the park. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, and, and as they went. Do I have a church still in here today? Glory to God. And as they went. Oh, you missed your chance again. You, you, missed, your, you missed your shout. He gave them the word. And as they, glory to God, the reason many of us never get our blessing because we never have our as they went moment. <laughs> because that's when they got the blessing. They didn't get the blessing until they went to the as they went. Because that's how God blesses us as we go. That's the reason Jesus said, I got to go to Jerusalem. I, I don't know what else. I know God want me to go to Jerusalem. Anything I else got to do, I can do that as I go to Jerusalem. But I'm not going to stop going to Jerusalem. I'm always on my way to do what God wants me to do. Anybody here this morning? I need to be on my, oh, let me help you out. Uh, somebody, anybody, whoever wants to run to Matthew 28, verse number 18. Matthew 28, verse number 18. When you get there, say amen. Yeah, we ain't got no real Bibles no more. <laughs> These electronic Bibles slow. In the old church, in the old church, I'd have said Matthew 28, find it. <laughs> Y'all got to turn on, scrolling down, finding <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Matthew 28, verse number 18. Y'all ain't there yet? And he said unto them, all power. Ain't nobody there yet? Oh, for your power is given unto me where? So Jesus first says, I got how much power? I can do whatever I want because I have how much power? I can say anything I want because I have how much power? So the, he says, since I have all power, since I have all authority, he says, do what? Therefore, do what? Therefore, go and do what? Make disciples of who? Do what else with them? Uh, in the name of who? And in the name of who? And in the name of who? Then what are you going to do with them? To do what? How much? Whatsoever I have what? 
Then he says what? And lo, and surely I am what? I want to tell you something about that text. Maybe it will bless your heart. Back up in verse number 19. Some of you says, therefore, go and make disciples, right? Well, the Greek says, as you go, make disciples. As you go, make disciples. <laughs> as you go, make disciples. As you go, make disciples. See, see, the command in that verse is not go. Therefore, go is what you call an adverbial modifier. As you are going, as you are going, the command is make disciples. So it's as I'm going, what am I supposed to do? Of, how, of who? And as I'm going, what's I'm, what am I supposed to do? Baptize them where? In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name. And as I go, what am I supposed to do? Teach them to do what? To observe all things whatsoever I command. He says, and as you go, lo, or surely I am with you. How so as you are going to work, what's the, make disciples. As you're going to school, what are you supposed to be doing? Then the command is not go to school. Y'all need to say something because y'all going to make me say something up in here. you are going to make me say something. As you get married, Jesus, Jesus, what's the command? Y'all going to make me say, y'all need to say amen because I ain't got time to go in here with y'all. But as you, as you go to work. And it's funny how we'll, come, we'll obey the as you go to work, which ain't the command. And disobey God when it comes to making disciples. And then you start to wonder, why I ain't got no blessing? Why ain't the Lord with me? Because the Lord being with you is in the context of as you go. You don't believe me? Look at verse 20. See, it's after that stuff. He says, surely I'll be with you. Surely I'll be with you when? As you go. As you go and do what? Making disciples. <laughs> but it was good this morning. So back to our text. As they went. In our text, as they went, they were what? Healed. They were cleansed. So on their way to obey the command. They were cleansed. Finally, come boldly with your praise, a praise of loyalty. The Bible says one of them, one of them, one of them. There were ten, but one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. Praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found? to return and give praise to God except this foreigner, this stranger, this not a Jew. Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. One of them what? One of them who had been a leper with deep problems sitting with nine other leopards outside the city. One of them, whose skin was falling off and who had no feeling in his hands or in his feet. One of them, who had been separated from his family, contaminated and called unclean. One of them, when he saw, when he saw he was healed, came back. He disobeyed the commandment. Oh, y'all missed it. See, y'all. The commandment was go to the priest. As he went to get to the priest, he saw he was healed. And so he had a comeback. <laughs> he had a comeback moment. When you see God 
moving. You need to come back and give God praise. Oh, do I have any praisers in here in the house today? He hadn't even finished what God told him to do. And God comes back. God says, look. He says, look. I'm healed. The other nine, I know they noticed too. But they said, no, no, no. God said, go see the priest. Eyes going, boss. But this dude, he came back. There comes a time when your faith has to move beyond the commandment. See, once God starts doing some stuff in your life, you got to get to the point that when God moves in your life, you make a shout for God. When God sure enough delivers you out of some mess, you ought to say so. When God has glory to God, when God has picked you up out of the mess you made of yourself, you ought to say something. Am I right about it? The Bible says he came back, this dude who hadn't touched nobody in probably 20 years, and instead of him being the high sedentary church person, he jumping on Jesus, falling on his feet, thanking God, and shouting, thank you. Because when God really show enough does something, it's time for God's folk to stand up and say, thank you. When God moves in your life, when God makes a miracle happen, you ought to say, thank you. And quit acting like you, he owed you something. No, God, I know, I know I'm on my way to, to do something, but I just want to stop right now and say, thank you. Thank you. Fall on his feet. The Bible says, but he was a Samaritan. He wasn't a good Jew. Sometimes folk that grow up in the church. They're so used to being around God that when something happens good, they don't even pay attention. Sometimes it's a church full of spoiled brats. <laughs> spoiled brats in the church. Don't say it, hey, good. Don't say it. You're a minute late. No, I'm not. You're a minute late. Spoiled brats in the church. Move on. I was going to say it, you know. Praise God. I, you know. I was going to say, we so spoiled, we come to church, can't even listen to the sermon for 30 minutes. I was going to say it, but I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. I ain't, I ain't saying it now. Amen. I ain't, I ain't telling for how God has blessed us and won't, we only give God 2%. I ain't going to tell her. I ain't going to say it, though. I ain't going to say it. I'm going to let Darren say that. He don't mind. He he make it real. I, I ain't going to say it. Anyway, so the Bible says, Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Don't say it. <laughs> Don't say it. Where are the other nine? We're not ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? At church. Come on, y'all act like, didn't he tell him to go to church? He said, go see the priest. Where you think the priest at? Because <laughs> that ain't even my point. Because <laughs> you got to be grateful. And the funny thing about this text, we sometimes read a lot into this text. We read into this text that these, these something wrong with these nine guys. There wasn't really nothing wrong with them. They just weren't positioned now to become whole. They were able to get cleansed, but they were never able to get whole. Because the commandment can bring cleansing. 
But you got to see Jesus to become whole. See, the commandment can handle your problem. But only Jesus can make you everything you need to be. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The commandment can stop you from fornicating. But only Jesus can make you pure. The commandment can stop you from cussing. What's going on in here? I said the commandment can stop you from cussing. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> but only Jesus. <laughs> only Jesus. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to mess with me anyway. The commandment can cleanse you, but it's only Jesus who can make you whole. I'm not saying you don't need the commandment because you do. The commandment always starts the process. But it's always God who ends the process. The commandment starts you toward the miracle. But it's only God who does the miraculous. So you have to obey because your obedience positions you. But then your praise... That's the reason I wouldn't let nobody. Glory to God. If I was in church one day and, and somebody wanted to stop me from praising the Lord, they better be a sinner. I'm just letting you want to know, they better be a sinner. Because I got, I got time for sinners, so I can talk to sinners. But if you're a saint and, and you got time to stop me from praising God, you better go on back to the front of the gate. Glory to God. I don't want my leprosy no more. I want to praise him because I'm here. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let no glory to God. I ain't got time to waste. I ain't got time to play church. Hallelujah. I got to give the Lord praise every chance I get. Because there's going to come some time when I'm weeping and I'm wailing. I'm crying, glory to God. I'm saying, Lord, Master, have mercy on me. And so when my time comes to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. I'm going to give him glory and I'm going to give him praise. Y'all stand to your feet. We're five minutes late. Y'all stand to your feet. Maybe you're here. And you need to be bold today. You need to be bold today. I'm telling you today that you can't be looking around at everybody else. You can't worry about the worship team walking up here. You can't worry about the big old preacher standing up there in the pink shirt. You can't worry about your neighbor. This is the time for you and God. And right now, God is working on your heart right now. You, you came in here with a problem. I don't know what your problem is, but you do and God does. And in your heart, you are crying out to God saying, God, have mercy on me. Right now, you're crying to him. And God is giving you a commandment in his word right now. And you're saying, Lord, I, I want to be clean. I just, I just don't want to move. Ain't no blessing without moving. God ain't going to bless you, then you move. You need to have an as they went experience. When God says go, you just go. And you trust God that while you're going, God is going to do. Anybody in here believe God but me? I said, does anybody in here believe God but me? Does anybody believe? you got to get up and move because you believe God. And you can't tell God how to do it. You just know he's going to do it. And he's going to do it as you go. As you go, and when he moves, can you just make me this promise? I dare you. Just make me this promise. When he moves, can you come to church that next Sunday and give the Lord a high shout? When he moves, can you let your, then you let your deliverance be a testimony to help me know that God does do what God says he's going to do? Maybe you're here today. You need to move. You need to move. I'm going to ask you, don't worry about everybody else in here. And I know we ain't here with all these other wonderful Christian folks. But if you can, just, just let the spotlight zoom in on you and God. That right now it's just you and God. It's nobody else, just you and God. 
And that if you need some prayer, if you need God to cleanse you, if you need deliverance, I'm asking you to be bold today and walk out on faith. More than able. Oh, yes. Yes. God will yes, he is more than able. Move in faith. Move in faith. He is more than able. And I'm hearing to you, if you will move, yes. God will yes. notice. Yes, he is more than And when God able. notices, the love in God's yes. heart compels him yes. to move on your behalf. He is more than able. <sighs> yes. God, we bless you right now, Father. We're just asking you, Father, to make us crazy praise.